Hi everybody, it's Abby from Abby the Librarian, and I'm back for our very last week of Middle Grade May 2018. Middle Grade May uh, is where we're just reading all kinds of great middle grade books during the month of May and posting on any kind of social media with the hashtag Middle Grade May so that we can all find great books to read. And uh, this is our last week of the month, week number five. Our theme for this week is books that feature diversity in a positive and uplifting way. So not necessarily books that are about issues surrounding diversity, but just books that are fun and also happen to be diverse. And this is a topic that I have quite a, a lot of favorites to share. So I'm gonna do some kind of lightning round book talks for you today because I have um, quite a few books and I didn't wanna leave any of them out. I could not choose. So let's get started. The first book that I wanna share with you, you may have heard of because it is on the bestseller list. Um, it is Arusha and the End of Time uh, by Roshani Chokshi. And I hope I'm not murdering uh, these names. I'm really going to try. So this is the first book in Rick Reardon's new imprint where he is featuring um, own voices authors to tell stories about um, adventure, mythology adventure similar to Percy Jackson, but from different cultures and written by own voices authors. So Arusha is um, based in Hindu mythology and is about a girl named Arusha who um, she kind of has trouble making friends at school. And one day the kids come to the Indian Museum where she and her mom live. And um, she kind of gets to talking to them. She kind of starts bragging to them about they have this cursed lamp that she's not allowed to touch, but she's brave enough to touch it. And of course, when she touches it, showing off for her friends, uh, it freezes time, it freezes everybody. And she finds out that she has a limited amount of time to um, try and save the world. So it's got a lot of that um, fantasy adventure that is great in Percy Jackson. It's one of the best Percy Jackson read-alikes that I have ever read because the tone is very similar. It's very light and funny. Um, it's got a lot of humor in it. So if you have Percy Jackson fans, you must get this, Arusha and the End of Time. And actually, there is another great Percy Jackson read-alike that came out this spring, um, which is The Serpent's Secret. It's the first book in the series, which Arusha is also a series, but this is the first book in another series, uh, Karanmala and the Kingdom Beyond by San, uh, Sayantani Dasgupta. And this is another one that is based in Hindu mythology. When Karen wakes up on her 12th birthday, her parents have disappeared and there is a giant demon in her front yard. And then these two very handsome uh, Indian princes show up at her doorstep to save her. But Karen doesn't really need that. She ends up slaying the demon, saving herself. And then she demands to set off on a rescue mission to rescue her parents. And so that is what the book is about. Um, her going into this kind of in-between dimension to try and save her parents and she learns of course that there she is the child of Hindu gods and there's this magic spell that has now um, run out of time because it's her 12th birthday and she has just all kinds of adventures it's really funny it's more of a kind of slapsticky kind of wacky humor um, but another great read alike for Percy Jackson. If you have Percy Jackson fans, they definitely should pick up both of these books. This one is The Serpent's Secret. Let's see, the next book, ooh, the next book I wanna share with you is a book called Steph Soto, Taco Queen. Uh, by Jennifer Torres and this is a great book for if you have any kids who enjoy like Disney Channel movies and that kind of like genre stuff that's what this book most reminded me of was a Disney Channel movie and I mean that in like the best way possible I loved it um, so Steph Soto her family owns a taco truck called Tia Perla and Steph uh, has about had it up to here with Tia Perla. Uh, the kids at school make fun of her because sometimes her dad brings the taco truck to pick her up from school. Sh they say she always smells like tacos. One of the mean girls at school starts calling her the taco queen, and Steph has just about had it. She could just live without Tia Perla 
but she knows that it makes her dad really happy that he really enjoys having his own business and he really takes pride in making Tia Perla successful. And so when their city announces new rules, new ordinances um, that are going to make it really hard for her dad to run his taco truck, you know, stuff starts to feel really bad. She starts to feel like she's maybe got to figure out how she's going to make peace with Tia Perla and what she can do to help um, prevent these new rules from taking place. But what can she do? She's just a kid. Turns out there's a lot that kids can do. So um, this is Steph Soto, Taco Queen. It's just a nice um, kind of lighthearted, realistic, contemporary book. Uh, Steph Soto, Taco Queen by Jennifer Torres. Uh, ooh, the next one that I want to share with you is a favorite of mine, and I always book talk this to kids. It's called The Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste. Now, this one came out a few years ago. There actually is a second book that has come out. Um, the Jumbies, as you can probably tell from the cover, is um, a scary story, and it is set in um, the islands um, where... The jumbies is what they call kind of evil spirits. Like, you know, um, we in America, we might talk about like vampires or werewolves or, you know, something like that. That's kind of in our popular culture um, on Corinne's island home. They're known as the jumbies. And Corinne doesn't really believe in jumbies. She's too old for that. She knows it's just like a, you know, tale that they tell to, to scare kids and get them to behave. Um, but one day these boys in her town steal the necklace that Corinne's mother left for her. And it's like the only thing she has left of her mother. Um, and they hide it in the mahogany forest. And now nobody's ever supposed to go into the mahogany forest, but Corinne, she, you know, she doesn't believe in the stories that they tell about it. So she goes in there to get her necklace. And when she comes out, something follows her out. Uh, it's just a really creepy story, and it kind of integrates, um, you know, the island culture, the Caribbean culture, um, in a way that just, you know, makes it just kind of a very unique story that's a kind of unlike a lot of the scary stories that, you know, American kids would find um, on the shelves. So this is a great one for kids who like a little bit of a creepy story, a little spooky. Um, the Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste. Uh, this is a sure bet for book talks too. If you ever need a book to book talk, book talk the jumbies. The kids eat it up. They love it. Uh, the next one that I have for you is a book called The First Rule of Punk by Celia Perez. Look at that bright cover. I love it. Um, this is a story about a girl named Malu. It's Maria Luisa, but don't ever call her that. She shortens it to Malu. And Malu loves kind of anything like alternative culture. She loves punk rock music. She loves zines. Anything that's kind of like out of the mainstream. That is what Malu likes. And she has just moved to Chicago with her mother. They know they're only going to be there for a couple of years. It's for her mom's job. So Malu has to, she's kind of sad. She has to leave all the stuff that she knows behind. She has to start a new school. And her new school is predominantly Latino. And when Malu starts at this new school, first of all, right off the bat, she gets in trouble because she's wearing kind of her favorite punk rock outfit. And it apparently does not meet the dress code. So she gets in trouble for that. And then, you know, she doesn't, she didn't grow up speaking Spanish. And so she kind of has some trouble in Spanish class. And the other kids start calling her coconut brown on the outside, white on the inside. They say that she's not Latina enough. And like, what does that even mean? Because we're all different, you know? Um... And then the school is having a like talent show and Malu meets these other kids who are just as into punk rock as she is and they want to put a punk rock band together and play punk music. But the principal says, no, like that is not appropriate for the school. It's not, doesn't um, celebrate their, their Latino heritage and so they're not allowed to do it. And so Malu and her friends decide to hold an alternative talent show. Uh, this is a great book for any kid who kind of likes to buck the norm a little bit, which I think a lot of middle grade kids do. You know, they want to kind of experiment a little bit and they, you know, they don't want to just accept what everybody has told them they should like. Um, so if you know any kids like that, they should definitely pick this up, which is The First Rule of Punk by Celia Perez. And I have one more book that I, again, I couldn't leave any of these out. Um, the last book that I have on my list is... 
the book Rebound by Kwame Alexander. And if you know or if you have followed my blog, you know that Kwame Alexander is one of my all-time favorites because his book, The Crossover, was my Newbery book when I was on the Newbery Committee. And this book, Rebound, is kind of a prequel to The Crossover. So it goes back in time and it talks about Charlie Bell, who was... Um, in the crossover, the boy's dad, and it kind of tells his story. It's a novel in verse, just like the crossover is. And um, in this book, Charlie, his dad has passed away, and he is really um, he's trying to figure out how to deal with his grief, and he doesn't know how to deal with his grief, and so it comes out as like him kind of acting out and kind of starting to get in trouble, and his mom does not know what to do with him, and so decides to send him for the summer to his grandparents' house outside of Washington D.C. And so he goes there, you know, it's totally different. His grandparents expect him to help out with chores and he has to go with his grandfather to the Boys and Girls Club where he works. Um, and it's there that he starts playing basketball. Now, if he is not at all interested in playing basketball at first. He would just rather read his comic books. He's super into like superhero type comics, kind of imagines himself as a superhero in his own comics, um, which there are some comic panels throughout the book, which is neat. Um, but there is a girl at the Boys and Girls Club who is super into basketball and kind of gets Charlie to start playing. And if you've read the crossover, then you know that the rest is history, that basketball kind of turned out to be his thing. You don't have to have read the crossover to enjoy this book. I think it's a great book all on its own. Um, of course, you should also go back and read the crossover. Um, but it's either way, you will still enjoy Rebound by Kwame Alexander. And those are my lightning book talks for you for some great diverse books. Um, I think that they're all worth picking up. They're all, you know, they're all favorites of mine. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed them. I hope you'll pick them up. And I guess this is this is it for videos for middle grade May. I've enjoyed doing them. I hope you've been reading some great middle grade this month, and I would love to hear about it. Let me know what you've been reading and enjoying. And until next time.